In a recent video, I made reference to this borderline where if you build tight enough in homes, you cannot use bath fans. You have to go with an ERV that's going to be exhausting from your bathrooms. Now, there's if you call tech support at an ERV manufacturer, they might tell you a number of different things. I just remind everybody that the people who are on tech support at any company are not necessarily the applications experts. There are exceptions to that, but I'll just, people are getting kind of confused about this. So I wanted to dive in and just talk about this borderline. And of course, just like anything else in home performance, and if you subscribe to this channel, then you'll see this again and again and again. Every home is different. It's like a fingerprint. Uh, the layout of the home, the, the way that the home is supposed to work, the family that lives there, the behaviors that they're gonna have, all that stuff goes into account. So first thing that we need to do when we're gonna assess how close we're gonna be to this borderline is to count up the number of bath fans that we would have in a plan. So here we have a very nice plan of a client of mine uh, who I hope won't mind that I'm showing his beautiful house. We're gonna count up the bathrooms. Here we have a bathroom that has a shower in it with the toilet between the door and the shower. For a bath fan, this is not that important, but that is like the best layout for a bathroom. So we're gonna have one bath fan there. We have the master uh, bath over here. We have a shower and we also have a separate powder. That's two. So now we're up to three bath fans. We have a bathroom right here, which again is laid out perfectly with the shower, with the toilet in between the door and the shower. So that's four up to four. And lastly, we have this laundry room. And in some states around the country, it is actually code that you either have a window or an exhaust fan. So um, we're gonna have to put an exhaust fan in there. So now five bath fans is what we're talking about in this home. We won't worry about the aviary. That is something that like I ended up recommending uh, exhaust ventilation for, but, but not nearly to the extent that a bath fan, which any bath fan is gonna run 50 CFM. So now what we need to do is figure out what the volume of this house is. And of course I have done that because I use 3D modeling all the time. And this is what this house looks like when you actually model all the tray ceilings and everything. This does not have a conditioned attic. Um, so be careful, you would wanna include the volume of the conditioned attic in that case as well, and the basement. And the volume here is 31,574.7 cubic feet. So all we have to do now, you say uh, the volume, 31,574.7, just to be super accurate, because that is the difference between somebody like me and somebody who is more of a schmo, is that I will literally be as anal as it takes to be super accurate. And I'll always win those arguments. You divide this number by 60, and that's gonna give you, a, this number that's right here is a couple of different things. It is, in the topic of other videos, your one air cleaning per hour rate during normal operating conditions in this home. But it also, in for our purposes today, is your one ACH50 blower door number. So that is how many CFM50 I would be blowing through a blower door if this layout got built to one ACH50. Now, code, the tightest code is ever gonna require is three air changes per hour. So all I do is take this number times three, and it gives me 1579 CFM50. I'm gonna start rounding at this point because um, it's not that important with a CFM50 number to be super accurate. So, we're gonna come over here to one of my favorite tools on the internet that I use on all my consults. It's called RedCalc. This is called the depressurization analysis tool, by the way. They've got a bunch of different tools in here. This is free to use, so please come and use it yourself. The building leakage in CFM50, you put right here, 1578. If I turn on one of these 50 CFM exhaust fans, it will depressurize the entire home to a third of a pascal. Now, one pascal is, you can barely even feel that. So I, I think most people would not be able to feel one pascal of pressure difference with the airflow that's then associated with that. So we're not too worried about that. What I am worried about is that when I double this 50 CFM and I turn on two bath fans, now two people are using fans, it's not going to go to 0.6. It's going to go to 0.8 because this is a non-linear relationship. Pressures are on a curve, pressures and airflows. So I'm still not over one pascal. If I turn on all five of them at the same time, three pascals, that is starting to be a problem. 
Now, at this point, if I build this home to code, to future-proof it to all future codes, so that it's at three air changes per hour, and hopefully it never gets leakier because you're punching holes in it, things like that, but if this home ends up being 1578 on the blower door, and I turn on all five of my exhaust fans all day long, and I have a wood-burning fireplace in here, or some kind of other open hearth fireplace, now we have a major problem because that house simply cannot work that way. If you did not have the fireplace and all of the gaps and cracks are perfectly you know, situated around the home, evenly distributed, consistent, then this may be not a worry if I'm in someplace like Arizona that does not have humidity problems. If I'm in Louisiana, I might still be worried even if I don't have that fireplace. So of course you're always using that fingerprint analysis to try and figure out what is this house particularly doing and what, it, what are the unique limiting features about this that are going to be a problem? Now, I might decide, like any reasonable person would, that the amount of times that all five of my exhaust fans in this home would be running at the same time for any appreciable length of time, like an hour, let's say, would be like 1% maybe. So at that point, now I'm not worried. So you can see kind of that this is a, uh, it's like an insurance policy. Like, do you need insurance? And when I was 20 years old, I used to think, no, I don't need insurance. But my dad said, hey, listen, if you get hit by a bus and the doctors call me and say, we can save his leg, but it's going to cost you $200,000 cash right now because he doesn't have insurance. I'm probably going to pay it. Um, so please get insurance for me is what my dad said. And I was like, oh, OK, all right, that's fine. I get it. Um, so here's what we need to start doing now is analyzing what happens when we start making this home tighter? So let's take this down to two air changes per hour instead of three. We're gonna go back to our calculator. We're gonna take back out the three, get back to our one, and now we're gonna multiply by two. There are other ways to do math, I know. So 1052 is what we're looking at now. This is two ACH 50. Now, if I had all five of my exhaust fans, now I'm running six Pascal's depressurization. That is starting to be more of an issue. But of course, that's very unlikely. So let's back it off and just see what one exhaust fan does. We're still at half a Pascal. Of course, if I do two exhaust fans at the same time, it's going to, uh, excuse me, if I do two exhaust fans at the same time, it's gonna bump us up to a Pascal and a half. Now, I have had clients who have had problems with backdrafting chimneys at, um, you know, one and a half or two pascals of depressurization consistently. So if you think it's likely that two exhaust fans are going to run and you have these uh, elements in a home that are just have no business being in a 21st century home, like open hearth fireplaces, please don't do that. Um, but if you have to, this is now we're nearing that line where like it's probably likely that we are going to be sucking stuff down the chimney and we're going to be smelling the chimney and now all of the things that we did to try to make this home airtight, which are a lot about health. Once you pass three ACH 50, you get tighter than that. It's you, you, the energy that you're saving um, is probably less important. Also, the once you pass three ACH 50, the sizing of your HVAC and the manual J is going to have like a less um, serious effect. So let's now take us to one and a half ACH 50. So we're going to go back to our 1578 and that divide that by two. Or we can just simply go divide this back down by two to get to our one and multiply this by 1.5 ACH 50. And that gives us 789. Bam. Now, if I run even just one exhaust fan in this house, I'm nearing one Pascal. That's starting to worry me. If I run two, as you saw, we are at two and a half pascals. That's well over the range of backdrafting. Something like an atmospheric draft water heater can be backdrafted with two pascals of depressurization in the whole home. Also, this does not take into account that we are, have open and closed doors. And if you saw one of my uh, interviews with Dustin Cole recently, who's an HVAC guy down in Louisiana, he said that he's always finding that when people close doors at night, generally is when that happens, the house will get really freaky and it'll start doing really interesting things pressure wise. So this is just considering that all the doors are open. If you start closing doors, it's going to be different. Now, if we put all five of our exhaust fans on now, 
were depressurized to almost 10 pascals. This is a major problem. So I would say that in this home, given that it does not have a fireplace and it doesn't have any atmospheric draft water heaters or uh, natural draft furnaces or anything like that, that would be like, just, have, just don't do that. Um, people are doing it, just to be clear, but you shouldn't. Um, now we're at the point, this 1.5 ACH50 in this home is where I would absolutely say we can't use these 550 CFM exhaust fans. Also, let's be honest, builders are not using 50 CFM exhaust fans generally. They're going to be putting, instead of looking at the, uh, let me go back to my 3D model here. So if you're going to put your exhaust fan in the master, right, we get this big old master here. They're not going to put the exhaust fan in the shower where it belongs. They're going to put it in the middle of the room. And now what they're going to do is install an 80 CFM or 110 CFM or 150 CFM exhaust fan because, number one, it's not going to be in the right place. So it's not going to work as well. So they need more fan power. Number two, it's not going to be ducted very well because it's probably installed, the box is installed by the electrician. He's going to point the duct that's supposed to go outside in a straight line not where it's supposed to go. So they're gonna have to curve that duct around. It's gonna be louder. It's gonna uh, take more energy to move that air. So uh, putting a 100 CFM in each of these, we can see now that if we did 500 CFM exhaust fans, now we're doing half a blower door test. And you can't always assume that everybody's on the same page about this. If you gotta spell it out, you gotta say how many CFM is the exhaust fan in that bathroom going to be? and have a discussion about that. Now, uh, if we got all the way down to, you know, down to one Pascal, or excuse me, one CFM 50, that's again, our 526 number, that those five 100 CFM exhaust fans is a blow and test. So that, and that happens, I swear, like, please take me seriously. I have clients who have exhaust fans like this and they can do crazy stuff to their house with an exhaust fan. Add to this that we're going to put in a giant, uh, 48 inch wide wolf, uh, um, you know, cooktop, and we're going to have a thousand CFM exhaust fan on the top of that. So let's add all of these together. Now we're capable of doing four and a half blower door tests at the same time with the exhaust stuff that's built into this house. Now you can't use makeup air on a bunch of different bath fans. There is a device that I'm gonna hopefully feature sometime soon um, that can do pressure relief. It's called an airscape, but um, this is just totally crazy. So again, in tight homes, one-way exhaust fans, really difficult. Let me just make one last point here, which is vented dryers. If I have 150 CFM vented dryer, you, if you're subscribed to this channel, you saw my interview with Scott True, who's my longtime buddy and client uh, who's building spec homes in Texas. And he had this problem with a vented dryer not venting properly because it couldn't get out because it was depressurizing this house to seven and a half pascals. And it, you just can't create a vacuum. Nature will not allow you to do that. So if you're going to use vented dryers, you've got to think about this again, right? And you got to add that into your calculation. That's why I like heat pump dryers. So... Just consider that as your last little note. If you have questions or comments, please post it below. I generally uh, deal with those personally when I have time. Forgive me for being slow on that. But uh, like and subscribe. Tune in next time. Mm -hmm.